This is the Sex and Censorship Podcast. Welcome back to the Sex and Censorship Podcast, the home of free expression. You can find us at sexandcensorship.org, on Twitter as Porn Panic, and of course on Facebook too. This is podcast number five, Doesn't Time Fly? This week's podcast is an interview with Vicky Dark. Vicky is a uh, feminist academic, author, ex-porn star and ex-escort who has, let's say, issues with the sex industry. First, this week's news. We heard that Richard Desmond has finally sold the British adult TV channel Television X to its managing director, Chris Ratcliffe. Chris is an old friend of mine and I congratulate him on his purchase. TVX has probably seen better days as with most British porn companies. Chris and I don't tend to agree on British state censorship of porn. Chris is a strong lobbyist for age verification and for blocking of overseas sites, especially free porn sites, that don't comply to UK law. Why would a pornographer want want porn to be censored? I have no idea. We'll no doubt discuss this issue at greater length soon. This week, France adopted the so-called Nordic model for attacking the sex trade, making it illegal to buy sex. As ever, supporters of the attack denied that prostitution was being outlawed. For example, in response to my tweet on the news, I received this from Stephanie Lamy. France is not banning prostitution. Actually, quite the contrary. We are banning the buying of sex and decriminalizing prostitutes. Um, I hope I didn't offend anyone with the accent. But it takes a truly Orwellian mindset to believe that one can outlaw the buying of a service without hurting those who sell it. This is, of course, designed to hurt sex workers. The bigotry of the anti-prostitution movement is there for all to see. Sex workers are not divided on this. They are clear, whenever they are listened to, that sex work must be entirely decriminalised. Impartial observers such as Amnesty International, who recently adopted a policy of decriminalisation, have not found this to be a tricky two-sided argument. It's well known that criminalising any aspect of the trade clearly harms sex workers. So let's not treat prohibitionists as misguided people who care any more than we should waste breath over whether it's right or wrong to lynch black people or gas Jews. Anti-prostitution campaigners are bigots, plain and simple. They seek to attack what they hate and fear. And this is bigotry born of fear and loathing. This is rising in France and it's part of a far bigger historical shift. France is sinking back into fascism. What is disconcerting is that unlike last time around, the driving force of French fascism is the political left. A few days ago, for example, French Socialist Government Minister Laurence Rossignol said that women who wore veils were like, quotes, Negroes who supported slavery. The anti-veil law was presented with a thin progressive veneer using secularism as an excuse. But France's secularism is not the religious freedom of the Enlightenment. It's an opportunity to viciously abuse minorities. And as the sex work commentator Laura Agustin, also known as the Naked Anthropologist, wrote on Facebook yesterday, this anti-prostitution law, too, is rooted in France's deep racism. She said, quotes, In France, where more than half of those who sell sex are migrants, the law is overtly anti-immigration. The message is, if you want to do this, leave. End quote. France has always been one of the worst places in Europe to be an immigrant. Now the French war on immigrants is getting vicious and the left is at the forefront of it. The job of far, far-right leader Marine Le Pen is done. Who needs the far right when fascism is just as comfortable at home on the left? The collapse of the progressive left is not just a French thing. It's no coincidence that in the UK a Labour-led parliamentary inquiry is also trying to ban prostitution. Open anti-sex attitudes and veiled racist attitudes are now common on the political left everywhere. The recent attack on a student wearing dreadlocks, simply because the student was white, shows the rot is there on the American left too. As someone who once felt at home on the left, this change in the political landscape is disconcerting. The left's shift towards fascist attitudes forms the heart of my new book, Porn Panic, which is going to be published on August the 26th. Sorry for the plug there. Liberal liberal values of equality, liberty and reason are collapsing across the political spectrum. France's prostitution ban and that of the veil represent dark clouds rising over the Western world. So to this week's interview with Vicky Dark. I met Vicky on Twitter where she was sharing views that were fairly hostile to the sex trade and using the language of Gail Dines, the world's leading anti-porn campaigner. She denies being anti-porn. I offered to interview her, and to my surprise, she agreed. We had an interesting and wide-ranging conversation about porn, prostitution and slut-shaming. As you can imagine, we didn't agree on everything. Hi, Vicky. Hello, Jerry. I, do you know I thought you was a lady? Oh, did you? That's why I didn't press the your icon. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
Sorry. I've, no, I've never been a lady. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to. <clears throat> we met on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and um, I wanted to chat. Um, so you were um, kind of, you'd say, coming up with what I call an anti-porn line. And I, I know you you said you're not anti-porn. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was interested. I, I hadn't really hadn't heard your name before but yeah you seem to I've googled you you seem to be out there quite a lot um, yeah I was interested in interviewing you now um, I, I run the sex and censorship campaign um, I have a background in the porn industry I used to run porn sites um, I'm now a campaigner um, but yeah I, I, I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you really and see where you're coming from um, so you're a campaigner against censorship yeah yeah okay okay um, so, but yeah, it'd be useful if you gave a bit of background. Okay, yeah, on sure. Yourself. Um, okay, I used to um, be in the the sex industry um, from a young age, actually, and I I kind of stopped. I would say at a relatively young age, uh, late twenties, l- later twenties, earlier of the later twenties, and um, basically, I although I, I'm not going to slam it completely. It was um, good money. It was good money. Um, what I did, what I do think in, in retrospect is that because I was young, because I was ill-informed and because I, it's all quite negative actually, what I'm going to say, but suffered low self-esteem. Um, I was quite a vulnerable person. I believe that, that that's one of the reasons why I found the industry. Okay, a bit of a generalisation or a bit of a, a wide-ranging thing to say, I admit. But I do believe if I was more of a, um, say, say at that age, someone who had a bit more familiar support, you know, um, someone who didn't suffer with low self-esteem, it wouldn't have got me. Mm. Um, yeah, because I believe the industry feeds into someone's self-perceptions of wanting to be, um, you know, found... <sighs> attractive or or be to be told that they are uh you know kind of something or other i think the industry um feeds into people's to particularly women's because women have got a different experience than men and women's experience is that they are basically judged on their looks a lot yeah um, and i think young girls young girls buy into this very very an early age i think we we grow this is conditioned into us as women that our value is in our looks and in particular in our sexuality. And so I think in order to get validation for for self-worth, that female sexuality is where women go to find this self-worth, particularly if you're of working class, yeah, and you haven't been given, I'm not saying all working class, but, you know, of, of a lesser kind of um, like, um, privileged background. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the money's attractive. Um, and if you've got low self-esteem and things like that, you're not... I'm not saying uneducated as such, because it's more complex than that, but I do believe a lot of women are fodder for the industry. I think that's the negative side of it. I think it feeds into notions of um, of, of self-worth. And, yeah, yeah, and I think that's mm. why it got me. And, um, and and I found it there's, there's a free and liberating side to the industry. I know that, and there's people who go into it who are making informed decisions. But I do believe a lot of young women under the banner of liberalism and uh, entitlement, sexual entitlement, and going into the industry. Hmm. And I think, actually, it was a bit of a mistake. It's a bit of a mistake and mass, you know. Yeah, so you were doing, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, stop me if, I went if, off on a tangent, if there are questions. No, I mean, I, th- I think that's, that's dead on subject, really. But um, stop me if any of this is too personal or yeah obviously if it goes into to areas you don't want to talk about regarding your own background okay but you um you yeah i mean what you just said was a kind of mixed bag so you you said you know you, you've thought you feel you've made you made a mistake and that you were used or abused in in some way but at the same time you saw um there were positive sides that there there are ways i mean for example you said you went in because um, you had low self-esteem. How about? I mean, I've, I know a lot of models and porn stars and, and people who say that doing that increased their self-esteem because they realised um, they were attractive. 
uh, it, it made them feel attractive. Um, I, I appreciate what you say that, you know, women are, shouldn't just be measured on being attractive, but, you know, it's nice to feel attractive. Men and women like to feel attractive. So it isn't, was there any positive side to that? Did it, did it, how did it affect your self-esteem to be a model? Um, I actually think it made me feel like my, my absolute worth was in my sexuality. I felt like that I kind of attracted um, the men who were, because, because I didn't actually know no different, but I attracted men who were very much about uh, looks, very much about, um, about women and their sexual offering. Mm. It was ab absolutely radical for me to, um, to go to university and and to start educating myself and to start thinking wow you know i always thought i was I had a, a, a suspicion that i was clever <laughs> but um but when i actually started studying and when I, I carried on and carried on and i started to I feel like i had something to offer other than mm. you know, sex or or sexuality as such yeah then it was radical that that to me was just was like oh my god i feel so much better yeah, so, so that's, my, that's me personally. I mean, I, I just felt better from um, becoming more of a fully rounded human being. Mm. I started off as as literally feeling very two dimensional. You know, it was it was it was you know first and foremost judged on looks, judged on 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 sexuality. And the industry fed into that, I believe, and the industry I found was very. Um, oh, well, I don't, I'm talking about the industry mm. <laughs> that's like I don't know ten years ago. Okay, that's the industry I'm talking about. I don't know how much has changed now, but I don't think it has changed much. I th I'm talking about I'm talking about Gonzo. You know, I didn't do much of Gonzo pornography, but I've done a bit. Yeah. Um, I done it. I done the escort in and stuff like that. So I'm talking about the male-dominated side of the industry. It was very. Um, I didn't. I didn't see much uh, liberation, much sexual liberation. I saw it as you're a male. Con you're a male construction. You're dressing for men. You're going to perform for men, mm. uh, and you're going to be paid for that performance. And that's how I saw it. Yeah, I mean, you said you so you you've got a background in escorting, and yeah. you've done a bit of porn, by the, but not much by the sounds. But, but not much, yeah. But yeah. but yeah, yeah, a bit. Yeah. A bit. I stayed I stayed in the actual porn industry, I would say, for about a few months, and then I literally thought, well, what, am I, what am I bloody well doing? This is not actually for me. This is not for me as such. And I realise it's for some people, for many people. Mm. But um, for some reason, it freaked me out. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean... I don't know why I'm a sensitive self. Oh, no. I mean, you know, it, it will probably freak a lot of people out. I mean, <laughs> thing, you know, I don't... I certainly wouldn't offend anyone doing something they didn't like. But I mean, um, having met a lot of people in the industry of, over the years, I found, yeah, a lot of people dip in, find they don't like it and dip out. And a lot of people come in enjoy it and stay for various reasons but those are yeah. personal kind of choices aren't they oh God. yeah 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 they are they are they are jerry but, but what i want to what i think is i think it, it's it, it's there's definitely you know who am i to say there's not a place for pornography i'm not saying that at all i don't agree with that either i think there definitely is a place for pornography mm. as much as i think there's a place for um horror and uh, which absolutely frightens me and I hate it, but there's totally a place for horror in the more extreme, you know, subsets of horror. Like there is, it, there is a place for gonzo pornography. I just feel, me personally, that adults, you know, can do what they want to do. But I just feel like the ease of accessibility, uh, and, and the, and how children are growing up, the effects that this is having on children now because I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be able to flick on the button and have a look at absolutely the most you know max hardcore extreme um, conventions of pornography and when I say extreme actually it's normalized it's it's come on face it's gangbang and all that this kind of thing and um, it's it, you must admit Jerry that's the norm now um, I mean, I've seen a lot of that stuff. You mentioned Max Hardcore, but as far as I, he went to prison for obscenity, and it's virtually yeah. impossible to find his stuff online anymore. So, I mean, I, I okay, the in, my, in my memory, porn was a lot harder, and there was more edgy and, and, and over-the-edge stuff 10, 15 years ago than there is today. I mean, it, it, if anything, it's got kind of boring today in that it's all, it's all one scene, you know. It, it, it really? <clears throat> I mean, it's not the porn that I've seen. That's my impression, but certainly, I mean, I, I've seen Max Hardcore scenes. I haven't seen one online for ages because they've been. Oh he, yeah, because I mean, he, he, he was done yeah. for obscenity, but. Um, yeah, yeah, know. I know. He's, he's shooting again, though, is he not? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not as in touch with 
industry gossip as I was, but uh, if he's shooting, he won't be shooting what he used to shoot because otherwise he'll be going back to prison again, probably. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, he 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 played with the line between porn and abuse, and 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 he got absolutely. he got stung for it, and you know, absolutely, you know, the line for me is always consent, and if he crossed that line, then you know, well, he he wasn't done for rape; he was done for obscenity, which is a different thing you know but I mean you know um there, there are laws against sex without consent um you know if you play with that if, if you play with that on camera a lot of people play with it on camera um with perfectly consenting models and I, I don't I think there's a place for fantasy and for fantasizing about these things um but yeah it's very different if the model herself isn't hasn't bought into what she's doing uh, and you know I'd, I'd agree with you on that and I think 99% of people, including in the porn industry, would agree with you on that. Um, you know, I think consent but what about is the line. type of um, what about the type <clears throat> of consent where uh, where they are consenting, you know, verbally, mm. but uh, they're very young. And you know, we've all been teenagers. We know that decisions made in teenage years are quite different to what we make when we are older. Yeah, I mean, we've all yeah, and, and that applies to both sexes. Um, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. I, the thing is, it, it, it's a difficult decision, but um, you have to accept that beyond the age of consent, people have the right to consent as well as the right not to consent. Um, that people regret things and change their mind later, but it doesn't mean they they weren't consenting at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there are abusers everywhere, and and uh, and you know, con consent isn't just a matter of saying yes and then having anything done to you it's, it's a matter of agreeing to what is going to be done to you so yeah I mean you know if um, you know I've met sleazy producers in the past and I think the there's a lot more sleaze in the past than there is today there are always people who will push lines and that's whether they're porn directors or just blokes that you meet in your private sex life and, and you know the, uh, the thing is it, it's you know it to me it's, it's a matter of education um, and you know, teaching girls as well as guys um, where the well, teaching guys as well as girls where the lines are. Um, but I don't see that this is a problem specific to porn. In fact, it's a problem that's probably less prevalent in porn than in the rest of society because you have, in general, you have. Well, for a start, it's being done in public. It's being done in front of camera crew and sound engineers um, and this kind of thing. It's not happening in private. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, consent is consent, rape is rape, but th that isn't, that's the same on or off camera. Um, I, I don't see I get, that. I get that, is, I get that, I get yeah. that. But what I'm saying is, uh, you know, it, yeah, I understand that completely, but then there's the issue of, okay, people change, people evolve, mm. and you've got imagery out there, and this is, um, you know... I identified the situation myself, uh, and it's uh, it's been met with a lot of um, opposition because people say, "How can that be done?" Basically, what I'm talking about is buying back content. Yeah, I'm saying that there should be clauses put into you know people's contracts whereby, in a certain amount of years time, certain amount of time, quite an extensive amount of time, because money's got to be made off those images. Otherwise, what would be the point in doing mm. it for the producers? I accept that. So, so extensive amount of time goes by people should be able to buy back content because I believe it, it keeps people stuck. I don't I don't think a lot of people want to buy back content, or, or everyone, I should say. I don't think everyone regrets pornography, but sure. I think there's a substantial amount of people who do. A lot of people are bound to, you know. Um, yeah, and, and so is it fair to have it on there forever? Um, it's. I don't know if it's fair, it's kind of the nature of, the, the internet and, and the world. I mean, I, when I, I ran a site, I didn't make porn. I, I sold other people's porn. But I was often contacted by models who were trying to take down their past. When I say often, it, it, might, oh, have, it, it might have That's happened. That's interesting. It might have happened three or four times. Um, right. And, they were, they, yeah, they were trying to take down their past. And, you, yeah, I mean, absolutely, you feel sorry for people that they have to do that. And they're obviously in situations, you know, I know you're a parent now. Becoming yeah. a parent changes changes life and changes yeah. the world. Other, I mean, other parents can be incredibly snobby and judgmental, and that you know, when people become parents, it's not necessarily that they're parents; it's the fact that they're then they're suddenly judged for what they've done in the past. So, um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to do. I mentioned I, I mentioned that the idea of buying back content to a producer friend of mine, and he went, 
I'd love to sell my old content. I can't. I can't get any See, money for it. See, that's fantastic then. Um, but that you could know, be, I, that be, could be good for the producers. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't stuff. see that there's a, an inherent problem with that. To me, the problem is that it's not. You know, it's not necessarily the porn industry that's making your problem. It's horrible people in the real world who are making your problem, and you're trying to change your past in response to them. So, to an extent, mm. you know, one of the things I, I campaign against is, is slut shaming and this idea that that you're you're a bad or dirty person for having done porn or escorting or whatever, and that's an inherent problem in society. And you know, yeah. you, you you can yeah. kind of try and hide your past, and it would be nice if you could try hide your past, but wouldn't it be nice? If people in the real world, you know, to be honest, the people I met in the sex industry are the least judgmental people out there. It's the, it's the rest of the world that that kind of that has a problem with this stuff. Um, I found I found the people that I met in the sex industry to be okay as long as you adhere to the status quo, which is mm. not everyone. Obviously, I'm not talking about everyone here, but there's the certain people that I mix with at least. You adhere to you know the the, the pleasure of of the people in charge. And then you know everything's going to be all right. And and if you're and if you're not like that, if you're not that way inclined, then um, you're not favourable. I, I saw it as extremely um, or patriarchal uh, yeah. on a kind of potent level. What the stuff I was people who I knew anyway, they was all kind of conforming to to pleasing certain people and uh, in charge. And if they didn't, they wasn't particularly favourable and. The money was good and everything like that, but I, I just didn't find it liberating because of that particular imbalance, that gender imbalance. Yeah, I mean... In heterosexual porn. Yeah, and I'm um, thing is a lot of porn, 99% of porn is very dull and just copies other people's ideas. You know, there's very few creative people around. So, and I think... I love the output. I think it's great. The, watching it for... Subversive, subversive stuff. Yeah. But when you're talking about Gonzo, you're talking about yeah. really the kind of small scale amateur, blokey um, kind of stuff, you know, handheld cameras. Yeah, um, dirt cheap, dirt cheap stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like, literally the the the, um, the value is in the you know in Travenous <laughs> camera camera shots of uh, of women, and that doesn't cost any extra. That's just a bonus. So mm. it's literally. And I just think by nature that that subset in on mass is 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 harmful because yeah. because Jerry, what it is, kids are logging into this stuff and they are self sexualizing. They are you know take they exhibiting circus acts or <laughs> the type of acts that are being acted out in these porn uh, videos as, as natural. You know, at a young age, all right, okay, it's not going to be an exact replication, I would say. That hopefully, they're not doing acts of DP at a young age and stuff like that. But there's going to be a kind of, a prolif you know, a filtration down, and it's still going to be quite harsh for the for young minds, I think. Um, I think there's evidence that porn um, does make people more adventurous, and that's what you'd expect because people are getting ideas that they wouldn't have, have had before. I mean, in general... You know, the, the mass evidence, when it, when it comes to sexual violence and, and so on, the evidence seems to suggest, that, well, there's a lot less sexual violence around than there was 20, 30 years ago. So, it, you know, there, there isn't evidence that porn has led into this in any way. There's evidence that porn has decreased it. But if it if it's leading, um, the thing is, I, I don't believe, because, because I'm from an older generation, I don't necessarily believe that it's making guys any pushier than they were before porn they may be more interested in trying new things um but i grew up in a very ignorant age where i you know i had sex before i ever saw porn well other than magazines um and we were a very ignorant very um confused generation it wasn't you know you you had no idea what you're letting yourself in for the first time you had sex whereas i think but isn't that the beauty do, of it though isn't that it, the beauty of it i believe that's the beauty um, of it well, it was a beautiful thing. I don't know. It was, it was kind of it was the way it was in my generation. We didn't know any better. But the fact that, you know, people are a hell of a lot more aware. They're better sex educated, but they also but, do have but access to porn. Who's the teacher, though? Who's the teacher here, though, Jerry? Well, we didn't have you any know? teachers. We, we fumbled our own way along. and We certainly didn't have I, I have much education about ideas like consent or, you know, or, or anything or uh, any more than we had education in positions or kinky things to try or, or whatever and you know most of those kinky things to try aren't bad or oppressive 
they're just they're new ideas of things to try that might turn people on and, and you know women are every bit as as filthy and experimental as men you know that is you know women aren't we you know we grew up thinking that girls were pure and you kind of needed to to somehow kind of talk them into it you know and and um because yeah. uh, to an extent i think one of the blessings of this era is that we know we know girls aren't pure we know they have dirty thoughts they were just told to suppress their dirty thoughts it was men were allowed to have dirty thoughts in the old days but not girls you know and now it's 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 become a lot more equal we know you know it's great that girls are filthier and the girls aren't are less ashamed to try things and it's great you know guys are less ashamed to try things too um you know I, yeah I, half the kids yeah, that are normal that. today I, I don't think i'd heard of when i when i was young um you know probably anal sex was probably the most outrageous thing we'd ever heard of and i think we mostly tried it um but there was certainly no but guy... sex now is if you're not, if you're not doing anal sex then you're fine. now it's like if you're not doing anal sex you're an absolute prude and the porn industry can be thanked for that, you know, uh, proliferating that idea into the mainstream, into into society. And I'm yeah. not saying there's anything wrong with that either. Mm. Great, you know, it's up to them if they, it's up to people if they like doing anal sex, fine. But it's 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 the idea that women are actually, you know, they have to do this type of thing. Otherwise, you know, because of because of the proliferation of porn and and the idea that women are, you know. <laughs> doing every having to do everything or not having to do everything they are absolutely sexually liberated and their absolute goal and this is the idea from pornography is that they are going to bang as many men as possible and do as many filthy acts as possible and they are the, mm. the, the utmost that's the aspiration and that's the idea that the porn industry are selling to people and and if that liberates women in a good way then that's fine but i think overall it's making the young, particularly who don't know any better, feel that they have to adhere to this type of... I mean, sex has suddenly become governor, and I'll tell you why, because cause it's money, because money is the absolute governor, and, and sex, it, you know, sex sells, and sex, you know, money then uses sex in the mainstream, uses women's bodies over and over again to sell products, and the por- pornography is... I don't agree with what you say, Jerry. I think it is getting harder. I think more stuff is happening. I think more acts are being normalised in pornography in order to make it more to make it actually porn to keep it as porn because the mainstream in, in advertising advertisements you're having women's bodies commodified all over the place and it's natural to see women as decoration and that that's the function of of women's ex- experience and women in pornography that the you know the baseline function is women as objects i think uh, you, i mean you us, you know yeah. we are more used to sexual imagery and i don't think that that's a bad thing but at the same time we see again compared to when i grew up um we see women in all sorts of roles that we didn't before you know um we had a female prime minister when i was a teenager and but you know um you know, I think, you know, we're seeing women in more diverse roles. There are more female politicians than ever. There are more female in the public eye in in various roles than ever. And it happens that women are also presented as more sexual than they ever were before. But the thing is, it doesn't... Yes. I've never got the objectification argument because you have this idea that if a woman is on camera having sex with 10 guys, yeah. then girls are pressured to follow her. But they're also. But if a woman's on camera as a sports, as an athlete, if a woman's on camera as a politician or as a, a leading lawyer or whatever, um, there's you know nobody says these are just options that you know there isn't a united womankind that girls are supposed to follow. There are a lot of different women making a lot of different choices, and girls can choose their role models. You know, I, I know. It's funny because I, I think it's a very deep, natural. It, you know, there are different types of people, and it's a very deep, natural thing. But I, I know, I know three or four women in the porn industry have all said they wanted to be strippers or glamour models, or whatever, from the age of four, five, but six. Why? why would they want that aspiration? I mean, what is in their heads to make them think like that? They these, want to perform. But they these are all intelligent men. women. I mean, you know, um, a couple of them, a couple of them I are don't graduates. Think this, I think this is pretty 
I think that's pretty messed up. If that's what they're thinking at a young age, they want to be strippers. Why? But I wanted to be I wanted to be Tarzan when I was a kid. It didn't mean that I didn't I didn't do my science A levels, you know. Sexually compromising yourself. Well, he did swing around in trees with a pair of swimming trunks on. That's not. That (laughs) might be attractive, but that's not sexually compromising yourself, Jerry. I think women, you know, the cum. It's the cum. All right, to use Gal Dine's rhetoric, it's the cum bucket. It's the the you know the the you know the the I'm down here and I'm going to do everything you want. I can do every damn trick in the book. I am your performer. I am your absolute sex queen. Uh, and this is what I am. And I love I love drinking cum and all this kind of thing. And this is what the idea is now. It's gone from Playboy, if, um, objectified, uh, great thing to look at that doesn't speak much, to now, oh, God, I'm, you know, the most dirty thing on the planet and I'm going to shag my way for a thousand men. And that's the, that's the new identity that the porn industry are projecting now. I don't think that's healthy at all for young children. I'm not saying, obviously for young children, but for, for young adults, I'm not saying that porn should be banned because of that. That's my personal opinion on gonzo pornography, mm. underlying gonzo. Um, but what I do think is that porn actors should be given legal rights about buying back image. That is my personal opinion. Um, it would be an interesting idea to explore. But as I say, I think, you know, there's there's a lot more to things than that. So, I mean, there are different accusations made. One is that women are doing things on set that they're not necessarily comfortable with doing that's absolute you know that absolutely shouldn't happen obviously like kind of being forced to do things jerry yeah forced or subtly forced you know and and that's never acceptable the other is the effect it has on people who watch it and that's where i I think i I don't agree with you and i don't agree with gail dines i've read porn land and i think it's a silly piece of work i don't think that there's you know gail dines looks to me like a closet Christian fundamentalist who's trying to use feminist language to to get out her hatred of sex. She doesn't. Christian. She doesn't. I mean, Gail doesn't. doesn't seem to be a a lover of sex in any way, shape, or form. She says that she she loves listing all the things she hates. I've never heard her say anything positive about sex or what what the right way of doing it is. I, I get yeah. the impression she yeah. she's a very fundamentalist character, and she makes a lot I'm of money doing sex. what she's do, what she does as well. You know, she's. Um, I think she's onto a nice little learner with her books and with her anti-porn books and, and that kind of thing. But um, I mean, you know, when I've seen you on Twitter, you do you do kind of use some of Gail Dine's language and arguments and <laughs> yeah. so on. You're clearly not the same kind of person as her, and you, you have a modelling background. Um, but you know, th- I think there's a few things being mixed up here. Um, and one of the interesting things is that you went on into academia. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, oh, I don't know. Am I allowed to ask you your age? You can tell me to piss off. Yeah, thirty-six. Okay. <laughs> and so you're um. And what 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 age did you go into back into academia? Oh, or, twenty-six. Right. So and you're yeah. still doing porn or escorting at the time. Just yeah, finishing up type thing, you know. But but yeah, I mean I've done it solid. I went every now and then. I kind of left the industry and went to work in places like TJ Fridays and stuff like that. But. You know, mm. I was kind of like, oh, my God, there's, I've got no money. And I had children, uh, young children at the time. Well, and You know, that's a key point, isn't it? Because, you know, where else can any, where else can, can, you know, which other unskilled job? And, you know, I know, people, I know. people will argue with me that it's unskilled, but, you know, it, effectively you don't need special training for it. Which other unskilled job in the world offers this kind of money? You're earning the same kind of money as top lawyers and people in the city. Um, and it's true. you know that to me this is this, this is, is a downside of choice rather than a, a coercion you know this is something this is the one choice that women have and men don't have and I can promise you that if men could sell sex then half of half of men oh, would quit imagine. their jobs tomorrow you know but you know we don't <laughs> we don't have that that I'd call it a privilege and you know you, you've as you said, you made the choice to go into waitressing and then you make the choice to go back into porn or escorting for fairly yeah. obvious reasons. You earn in an hour what you'd be earning in a in a day or two as a waitress, I'm guessing. I mean, well, the thing with the escorting, it's like, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's someone on a Naked Truth guy on a Twitter. He always seems, he says comments, uh, you know, it's saying that escorting affects people more than pornography. I actually think escorting affects you but i think simply because the images are out there and dogging you for life if you don't want to be in the porn industry for life that's the main it's a pragmatic thing i'm saying i'm, I'm just simply you know you can bury 
All right, it sounds cold, but I can bury any effects that escorting have given me. Okay. I think I can. Because other people aren't there pointing and, and knowing what you did. That's just That's in right. your own mind. That's right. As simple as that. As simple as that. Yeah, as I mean... As simple I, as that. And I if think, it's my bone of contention, that's I, it, really. I mean, that is out I, there forever. I know women who have done both or who do both. And, um, yeah, I mean... It, the, the nice thing about escorting is it is private and that's why a lot of escorts would never do do porn but the women who do porn have said i i get to choose who to fuck i get to ch fuck good looking guys who know how to pleasure a woman and so you know the people who are genuinely getting a sexual kick out of it are would are saying they prefer porn because they're getting good sex with people they like and it's in a safe place as well they were they I've have a camera crew i've heard they use gavin's gone on set for uh come i've heard that i uh actually <laughs> i i was friends with um used to be friends with sandy kane who used to make a, a series called british bukkake babes and right. she told me you know so at the end for the for the dvd cover it'd have a picture of a girl with like a, a gallon of cum on her face and she said they used icing sugar for that <laughs> so you know there's there's a lot of um you know the stuff that's pointed out and said look this is horrible and abusive actually behind the scenes there's something very different going on from from what's yeah. happening, fr from what the viewer sees, which is, you know, yeah. which goes to underline that porn is a, a performance and an entertainment. It's not necessarily what you're seeing as a, the consumer isn't necessarily what's actually happened on set. I, I think if you get the right producer and I think if you're, <clears> you know, they're treated well and everything like that, I think nothing wrong with it at all. Um, I mean, what about that Brie Olsen? Mm. Um, I saw her article maybe. the other day. That, yeah. What she was saying, I mean, what she said was something like, it wasn't porn that hurt me, it was the people who judge me for yes. having done porn. Yeah, that's what she said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what she said. I mean, she was I mean, a pretty she's done big a lot name. Of porn. Yeah, and she was a pretty big name in the US. Yeah. Um, and presumably a lot of that was for, for much bigger studios, and, and the US ethos is a lot more maybe professional, but also much more money minded. You know, it's kind of much more a, a production line. Um, I get the impression a lot a lot of people in the UK is do it almost. much is it, is it more extreme though is it more extreme um possibly I, I think it's there's more misogyny type you know there's definitely more kind of um gagging throat gagging and you know oh, yeah. uh, and that yeah. kind of thing which seems to be a thing I mean I, I don't judge it if people if people are happy to do that and there are there are plenty of, of girls who are happy to do that yeah. That's fine, but I, that's personally, I, throat gagging is something that that doesn't get me off. Personally, it's a bit yeah, of a yeah. weird thing to to <laughs> like. But um, I mean, I used to know Angel Long. I don't know if you know her or you remember yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, she's one of the real extreme British girls who worked here and in the US. And I asked her like, why do you do this? Stuff? You know, being thrown around and you know a guy in every hole and double anal. And she said, it's just double like double anal. Does she really? probably i just made that bit up but she probably <laughs> didn't um but i mean you know and I, she, I said why do you do you enjoy it she said it's it's about pushing my body to the limit and seeing what i can do to her it was almost the same as if you ask a marathon runner why do you run marathons because it hurts you yeah. know to her it was like and angels are very tough take no shit kind of girl she's certainly n not the kind of person i can imagine being pushed around um, yeah. Even though, you know, possibly when she was younger, but, you know, she loved every bit of it and she wasn't a very political person, but she she got annoyed when people criticized what she did, um, you know, and she was at, at that kind of extreme end of the industry, if, if you like, and a very beautiful yeah. girl as well. You know, I asked her, why didn't you do catwalk modeling instead? And she said, because I like porn better, you know, catwalk looks really boring. No, that's fine. That, um, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, You know, you know, this... Um... This nihilist view of life, mm. Jerry, do you know what I mean? Nihilism. I think it's quite an elegant um, lens in which to view life. That no, the, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of aspects where, where you could say this won't work, but that nothing is truly good or bad. Okay. And so I look, I think of that approach when I think of the porn industry. And I don't, I, the last thing I want to do is take on the, the, the very crude moral judgment of what's good and bad. 
and I'm really not for that. I'm totally not because that, that's why I don't like Christianity because of that that fundamental view of, of what you know morally good and bad and all that, this kind of thing. So it's not that it's not through that lens that I'm criticising the porn industry. I'm just looking at it literally from a um, from a from a superficial level and seeing the the mass idea out there is gonzo, and it's women as it's women as object and it's ma- a, a, an empowered male. Mm. And if if it was out porn out there, whereby it's more conventional, the filming and and you know it's women seem more kind of liberated, truly liberated, then I wouldn't see any problem with it. But I think it's this this where, where, however they treat you behind the camera, what's being put out there is this this woman submissive woman down there, a man up there, and that's the the dominant idea that we see. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it probably. I don't know if it is because we search out what we're interested in. You know, I mean, there's plenty of um, femdom. Like the tube sites, the free content you're getting off. Yeah, well, they tend to push the stuff that's most watched. So it's probably true that yes. most people looking yeah. are looking for women in kind of subservient position, uh, uh, submissive positions rather. Um, but then again, a lot of I think I, I know a lot of women who look at that stuff as well, and they're not necessarily particularly submissive women. They're, they're you know, people get off on the idea on, on seeing people dominated or imagining themselves being dominated and a lot of very tough partic- you know confident women like to be dominated in the bedroom and so you know so do a lot of men there's a lot of porn out there with men being dominated by women which isn't my taste so I don't look at it very much but it's very easy to see there's loads of that out there and and uh, you know a hell of a lot of men enjoy being being dominated and, and crushed by a, a, a powerful woman <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I would then say that's a counterpoint to the dominant form, and that's it, where it only functions as being a counterpoint. But anyway, <laughs> without going into to that, um, um, I just wanted to get back to uh, yeah. I've um, I've noticed what what was it you're studying at university? What oh, did you go and study? Uh, actually, something it, it's got it's informed by um, por- pornography as such. Uh, but it's actually my my love, the love of my life, transgressive fiction. That's right. what I'm doing at the moment. I've seen you're an so, author as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I am. I am. Yeah, the last one I've done was on uh, Lindsay Dawn McKenzie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the reason I ask about the academia thing is I've noticed I've had friends who are really kind of cool, liberated, done porn, done it, stripping, done escorting, and then gone into university and, and kind of come out with a whole you know there's almost like a reprogramming that goes on and come out with a very different view of of what they did almost almost as as if you know um as if their own beliefs about what they did have been replaced by someone else's by other people's okay. beliefs you know and certainly that you know yeah. you quote Gail Dines who's a yeah. professor you yeah. know a professor even though I have no idea how she became a professor personally but Why, because she's very you think she's biased <clears throat> Oh, she's a campaigner. She's an activist. She, you know, I don't think she's a, an, an impartial academic at all. Um, but it's, but there are messages, certainly, especially in the humanities. You know, these messages, um, these kind of fundamental anti-sex things are dressed up in very big words of objectification and sexualization and uh, and on and on. And and it's almost like you know people people come out with a different view of themselves um they they, they learn to they see them they, they, you learn to see yourself what you did through other people's eyes and maybe you learn to see yourself through very judgmental eyes at university i'm not i'm not discounting any of your own experiences before I that think like no i get that i do i accept what you're saying um but like like mm. Brie olsen i guess well, no way near was i ever ever got to the level of fame as she did Sim- well, for one of the reasons, not simply, but partially because I didn't want to. I did it for money. I'm a, I'm mad. I done porn for money, not for fame. Hmm. Every, everyone does it for fame, don't they, Jerry? <laughs> Mostly. Well, there used to be a lot of money in it. One of the things about the industry today, there's just no money in it compared to ten years ago. Oh yeah, there, there, there was, is money. I was in given a lot of too. money. Yeah, yes. I mean, you know, you couldn't make money in it today, um, but you know, there really? is money in escorting still, and actually, a lot of the girls. Uh, who do porn only do porn so they can increase their escort rates because as a That's porn right. star they they can charge more. Um, but yeah, right. the money's simply gone from porn. Ten years ago, it was a very a much richer industry than it it was today. Um, 
And so, yeah, the only reason you would do it today is if, if for the sheer exhibitionist fun of it, I think. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, do you know what? I, I, I believe <clears> this, the, the unslutting on a subjective level, say the likes of Brie Olsen going back into society. I mean, she does. she's going to make money elsewhere because she's so famous, but take that template, you know, going back, transitioning back into society, you have a nightmare. And from my experience, just knowing in my head that I've done it mm. was my, you know, I was beating myself up thinking, oh, I'm going to be discovered. I, then I just thought, fuck it, you know, I don't care. I, I'm literally going to put myself out there and just be a commentator on this issue um, instead of trying to avoid it all the time. You know, that's what I thought. I'm just going mm. to talk about it because it, it makes me feel better, actually talking about it and I think it's an important issue and then well then like, you take away the power of anyone else to shame that's you for right. it over you yeah that's right absolutely and um I mean is, I is think... shaming been a big thing I mean ha are there people who have shamed you or do you get do you experience a lot yeah, of judgmentalism 100 percent uh, I mean when I on my uh, master's degree I uh you know I had a problem when the my lecturer found out that I was ex sex industry. It was informing my work. Mm. I couldn't help it. It was informing the writing. It so was coming you, you through. You knew what you're talking about, and that's unacceptable. Read between degree the course. lines, and then I think he searched out. <clears throat> you know, he took the time to search out and saw some stuff, and and there was little stuff then mm. um, that I'd written about, you know, under my name. But he found it, and then he then I felt the energy change. And you know, I I was high meriting all the way through that master's degree. Then he took he took me for the dissertation, and he made my life a nightmare, an yeah. absolute nightmare. And no, I, I mean, just I think that kind so of things hard. that kind of things disgusting, and it's <clears throat> it's the kind of thing I campaign against. That you know, I know a porn star who went who went into academia, went into teaching. And someone followed her around telling all her employers what she had done and she kept losing jobs. But, you know, oh, to me, um, that's I, I'm not going to accept that any of that's the fault of the porn industry. That's the fault of idiots, of, pe of judgmental yeah. people, you know, outside. And um, and their academia seems to be particularly bad. You know, there was the guy at University of Manchester. I don't know if you saw recently. The, yeah, uh, the porn guy. Yeah. So he he's now Is he Sheffield in Manchester. Yeah, he in Manchester. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> he's now quit his job as a, he's a lecturer in chemical engineering for the professor yeah um and he he quit his job because i think he was coming up to retirement anyway but the idea that you can't teach chemical engineering if you've had sex on camera with women you know again i you know and he I doesn't know you know goddard mike goddard i think his name is nick yeah nick. i'm hoping yeah. to interview him sometime soon but i'm waiting oh, yeah. waiting for How the dust to settle for him it'll be nice if if he let me interview him. but you know i, I mean I, I completely see where you're what you're saying and where you're coming from but i think yeah. you're aligning yourself I've seen, as i said you use the language of gail dines and that kind of thing i think gail dines is a slut shamer you know she she uses i don't think she'd like me i think if she wouldn't even like me because i've been in the industry i'll, I'll agree with you on that <clears throat> She likes people who come out of the industry and say it's horrible. So she might kind of part. Oh, she might that. like it. But only in her books are a lot of the arguments in her books are look, young women are doing this and then they're on camera and then and then they go to university and people call them sluts and isn't that terrible? Well, I think yeah, it is terrible, but it's not terrible they did porn. It's terrible that people at university call them sluts, you know. And and um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's very, it's nice to speak to. I can, you know, I, I, I've got a much clearer idea where you're coming from, but uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think you're a, a Gail Dines type no, at no, all. No, 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 I'm not. Um, I'm not anti-sex. I'm not anti-pornography. I'm just, um, I actually think with this slut shaming, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's important. I just think I just don't want to. Okay, gone. I'm talking about Gonzo here, Jerry. My, my issue, my problem is with, with the proliferation of Gonzo. The, the you know, the ubiquity of Gonzo, the fact that this one particular representation seems to be the first <laughs> click of the button that everyone, every youngster sees who's very interested to see this type of thing. This is what they're seeing, the women doing all these kind of, you know, circus type acts, I call it, because mm. I don't think they're, they're normal being gangbanged and double this and double that. Um, you know, it's a subset and there's a place for it, but um, I just think that the ubiquity of it is an issue for, for young people who don't know any better because that's the education they're receiving now. But slut shaming shouldn't be happening as well at the other side of the coin. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I definitely agree. And, um... But by okay in it, by saying gonzo stars can be teachers, I play devil's advocate, mm. isn't that okay in it? Just kids. Um, if... Well, the thing is, if it gone, there's nothing wrong with Gonzo 
you know, as I say, you know, I, I know girls who have done that kind of thing. There's only something wrong with it if the, if the, the performers aren't signed up to what they're doing. But if you're, I mean, Gail Dines makes a similar argument. She she keeps saying, she says, look, oh, Jenna Jameson is now giving lectures at universities and that's terrible. And what she's saying is she's done porn, so she should never, she shouldn't appear in, in respectable company. And to me, that's a horrible argument. But is you she know. doing lectures on, on pornography? I think so. I'm not sure what she was referring to, and she was, and, and you know, Gail Dines picks on other on other porn stars who have written books or who 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 go on TV talk shows or who go do on go on the le university lecture circuit. And she says, "Look, this is terrible that we're accepting porn stars." But to me, this is Gail Dines sh slut shaming. I she's haven't saying, seen that. You know, to I me, she's seen... saying once a slut, always a slut. You know, she did porn. She shouldn't be teach talking in universities, and that's exactly the 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 message I, I'd oppose. You know, because. Why shouldn't you be a university lecturer just because you did porn or escorting? If that and was, if it's that hypocrisy, was, isn't it? If it was the case, if we could get to the stage as a society that we treat people decently post-sex industry, that would be great. And if we could also get to the <clears> stage <throat> where young people are not accessing Gonzo so easily, that would also be great. Yeah, that's what I believe. Mm. I believe it harms youngsters, but I also believe these ex-porn stars, ex-sex industry people should be treated not like bloody paedophiles or whatever, because that's how it is. Yeah. They're treated with contempt. And on that, we completely agree. It's a shame. We we had a screening recently I spoke at. Um, it was organised by, by your mate, the Naked Truth guy, actually. You oh, was... about, but he, he's, he did a screening of the Unslut project, of the of Unslut, or, yeah, of Unslut, the film. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, which right. kind of covers some of these... Uh, no, I meant to watch it. I will watch it. The, ...these areas. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it will be great um, I'll, if you come along to the, the next kind of thing. But, you know, I think... I'd love to. Is it, think... If it's later <clears throat> next time, that would be great. That would be even better. Yeah, it's absolutely. Pretty early in the and, day. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, to me, <clears throat> to me, regardless of putting aside what your own experience of the industry and, and that, you know... Um, you, you know, you clearly haven't don't have a, a positive, a fully positive picture of whatever of everything you did. You know, the the slut shaming to me is, I think, the core thing that we can agree on from this. That, you know, someone like you, you, you know, you, there's no way that there's no reason you shouldn't be proud of your past. There's no reason you should have to hide your past. And there's absolutely no reason that anywhere, especially academia, which is supposed to be you know, an embrace of, of ideas, you know, uh, non-judgmentally. There's no way, you know, it, it's disgraceful that, that people like you should have to face um, shame or stigma for what you did, you know. And I, I think it's important, I think, for me that you you separate those two things, you know. Yeah. You may have encountered assholes in the industry. There are plenty of assholes in the industry yeah, yeah, like there are everywhere right else. Um, but it, yeah. it, it's, um, but you know, you should absolutely not have to, to be ashamed or to be worried that people find out what you did and you know that's the bottom line I think I think if we could get to that place as a society that would that would you know it would certainly alleviate my situ personal situation mm. I just didn't want to be selfish and always think about what's best for me I kind of try and think what's you know remove myself from the situation and think yeah I've had a hard time and I've always been concerned about <clears> you know being discovered here and there and because that's what happens when you go into to a mainstream society and you've, you've got the mindset of someone who's been in the sex industry and then you, you're you trying to change and, and you have to hide it. Mm. You have to hide it because otherwise you just get eaten alive. Yeah, and especially, as I said in the beginning, when if you've got kids and stuff. That's right, You know, exactly. parents can be the most judgmental people. I've got kids, yeah. you know. But, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I think I'm going to um, kind of bring it to a, a close there because we've been chatting for ages but it's been really <laughs> good to speak to you and maybe we can do a follow-up and it'll be great I mean maybe we should go and speak to younger women in the industry now and and, and yeah. see what they think about your experience and, and your views and it would be interesting to explore that yeah great all right Jerry lovely all right lovely to meet you all right thanks very much Vicky you take care cheers